All right, we're gonna be making this star field. It's a really great project. You can make your own sci-fi scene. You can make an endless loop of flying to the stars. You can maybe even uh, be lucky enough to see your deity fly by. Um, you could also make your own Star Wars intro, really anything you want. Um, I do wanna give some credit to Tuts by Kai. Um, I first followed his process for creating the stars, um, but then I made some tweaks to it and updated it for Eevee. So let's get started. Okay, I have Blender open. I'm gonna click A to select everything, X for delete, and hit enter to actually do the deletion. Um, so now I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh, and kick on plane. So we just add a new plane, and then I'm gonna hit S for scale, and type in 10,000. So that's a one with four zeros, one, two, three, four, and hit enter. So I hit S for scale and then 10,000. If I zoom out a bit, I'm using my middle mouse and I'm zooming out, you can see that you're starting to uh, not see the whole plane because it's just so huge. So what we need to do is in this right panel, which if you don't happen uh, have it open, just click N and that will open and close this right panel. Go to view, click into this end box right here, add in two zeros and hit enter and you will see you now uh, do see that whole plane in your viewport. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold shift hit A, hover over mesh, and we're gonna add in an icosphere. It's really teeny down there, but I'm not even gonna worry about that for the moment. I'm gonna hit one to go into our front view. And actually I'm gonna middle mouse around. I'm gonna left click on this plane so we have the plane selected. Now I'm gonna hit one to go into my front view. I'm gonna hit G for move and then Z to keep that move just on the Z axis. And I'm gonna pull this up and then left click to lock in that position there. So this uh, plane is gonna shoot down all of our little icospheres, which will be our stars. So now in this furthest right panel, click on the little button that looks, got these little rays popping out. That's the uh, particle properties. We're gonna add in a new one. And so right now, this is going to just shoot out little particles and let's just go through and adjust these settings a bit. So the number of stars I want to come out of here is gonna be 3000. If you don't have a great computer, if you're working on an old laptop or an old computer, you might um, further down the line while following this tutorial, if, you're, if your computer keeps freezing while you try to do this tutorial, you're gonna have to go down and lower this number. Um, but this should work for most people, and I would start here as a good starting spot. So we're gonna emit 3,000 of these. I'm gonna change this end frame to be 100. Uh, this is just the frames while um, from one to 100 is when these are gonna be sh uh, shooting out of this plane. And then the lifetime is how long uh, these little particles are gonna exist for. So I'm gonna change it up to 400, uh, just to make sure none of them disappear during the length of this animation. I'm gonna close that emission tab. Let's open up velocity. I'm gonna click in this normal. I'm gonna do negative 1000. And this is just gonna control how fast and the direction these are getting shot in. So it's just making sure these are being shot down this way. Um, let's close velocity, open up render. And so render as, let's click on this and we want it to be an object. And then down under object here, you can click on instant object and select our icosphere. So now it just knows that it's not just shooting out, um, just a placeholder, it's actually shooting out our icospheres, which are gonna act as our stars. And then I want to uncheck show emitter, um, and that's all we need to do for the particle settings. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Oh, I did forget one thing we need to change. Um, under this render settings, I want to change the scale. I'm gonna click in here, and change the scale to two. That's just gonna make our icospheres a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna change this value to 0.3. And that's just gonna give uh, some of their scale a little bit of randomness so they're not all exactly the same size. And so now we're done with the particle settings. Okay, so now I wanna add a material to the icosphere. So in this uh, right top panel, I'm just gonna click on icosphere 
And then down here, I'm gonna click on the materials and click new. And by default, it adds a principled shader, but we just need something to emit light. So I'm gonna click on this and change it to emission. And so yeah, an emission shader just you know emits light. So um, right now, this is just gonna shoot out this white light. And I'm just gonna click in here and change the strength to two. Then I'm gonna click on this little world icon to get into the world properties. And I'm gonna click on color. And I'm just gonna drag this color all the way down. I want it to be completely black like outer space. Now with my mouse hovered over the center viewport area, I'm gonna hit Z and click on rendered. Um, we're not seeing anything because we're on the first frame, but if I hit the space bar, you'll start seeing these, you know, you're seeing these, the emitter shoot these stars out. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna pause it at about 140. And for me, I'm kind of zoomed in. You might be zoomed in like I am. I'm gonna middle mouse zoom out. And you can see now, once you get to the right spot, there's a lot of little stars here. And so for now, I'm just gonna leave it and I shift middle mouse just to pan down. And so I'm seeing, I've got this nice grouping of stars here. It's kind of flickering. I think that's uh, something about the recording software. I don't think yours will be flickering like this. Um, but you can kind of you know, rotate around and you can see these stars here. But I'm gonna hit one to go back into that front view and I'm gonna go ahead and save again. Okay, and um, it's really great that this scene works really well with Eevee. So let's just go around and play with some of those things. So if you click on the render properties, the little camera looking icon, click on bloom. I'm gonna expand that out and I'm just gonna change some of these values. So I'm gonna make the threshold zero. I'm gonna tab into the knee, make it zero. Tab in the radius, hit 10. Tab to intensity and hit one. Um, so you can play with these values a little bit. Um, I found these to work pretty nicely with our scene. Um, so if I zoom in here, you're gonna now see, and again, yours shouldn't be flickering. I think this is something with the recording software. But if I go ahead and turn that bloom off and on, um, you can see how this is adding this big glow to our stars, which is really nice. Um, you can play around with the radius and the intensity. Maybe you don't like how far um, these glow, but I have found these to be pretty good values, but I can leave it up to you if you'd like to tinker with it a little bit more. Um, I have also played with a really small threshold, might be a good idea, um, but again, I'm happy with these results. Um, I'm gonna change this from being a white to a blue. If you go really far blue, you get this really intense effect, but I think a little more subtle, but still pretty blue. Something about there is something I'm happy with. Um, also, this grid's a little distracting for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and click. Right here, you can hide the grid. So I just clicked that little down arrow, viewport overlays, and unclicked the grid. Um, so you can see now, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. We have a pretty nice star field going on already. Okay, so now I wanna go from this emitter to just having all these stars be an actual object in the scene, not coming from an emitter. So in this uh, right panel at the top, I'm just gonna click on plane, and you can see it's highlighted now um, if, you, if it's in your view. Um, but then I'm just gonna go back to this particles, you click on that little icon here. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna click on the gear this time. And this is where your computer might freeze on you. If you have, um, you know, not the best computer, just be prepared to be very patient. Once you click that convert button, you should just not touch anything until Blender updates. Okay, so I'm gonna click the convert button. Now I'm not gonna touch anything. And you see for me, it made all of these little stars their own little icospheres now. Um, if you have a slower machine, that may have taken you longer. And it would be a good idea if you just don't touch your machine until you've seen it update with all these little icospheres. So once that's done, um, I still have my plane selected. You can see um, it's selected here. So I actually don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna hit X and enter to delete that sphere. So now it's kind of problematic that all these icospheres are just a completely separate objects and they're not related to each other. And it's kind of a lot for your scene too. So uh, we don't have anything other than these stars in the scene. So I'm gonna hit A to select all of them. And then you kind of have to zoom in and then shift click on one of them. And you'll see it kind of gets a little bit highlighted there. Now we can hit F3, which brings up um, where you can search for operators. And I'm just gonna search for join. And again, this is another time where if you have a slower computer, you're gonna have to be patient. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm just gonna let, I'm not gonna touch my computer at all and wait until now. You can see here, 
I only have one icosphere, and if I hit the eyeball, you can see it's all just one giant object. Um, so now it's a lot easier to work with. Okay, basically we're done at this point. I am just use my middle mouse to kind of pan around. I'm going to zoom out. The next part is really a little bit up to preference and what you need for the scene. Um, and it also kind of depends on how good your comp computer is too. But I'm going to add in some array modifiers just to make this an even much larger um, star field. So I have this, I'm going to hit A actually just to make sure I have this selected. Under this wrench of modifiers, I'm going to go ahead and click add modifier and click on array. Now I'm going to hit my uh, one to go into my front view. And by default, it put the... I don't know where it put this. Let's see. I'm going to type in zero and change that to zero. I'm going to change this to negative one, I believe, the Z. And you see now we have um, we have another duplicate below. Um, I kind of want to have these slightly overlap a little bit because the way the emitter works, there might be a little difference um, in the spacing. So I'm going to have a teeny bit of overlap. So I'm just going to click this little arrow until... Right there, there's a teeny bit of overlap, so for, it's a negative 0.7 as a good value. So now I just have a bigger star field to work with, and that will fill up my scene even better. And I'm just going to keep taking this further. And again, you could have a count of three if your computer can really handle this and you're not seeing any slowdowns, you're not worried about it. You may go ahead and make this a three. Um, but if not, you can stick to two. I'm going to go ahead and add modifier, and we're just going to add... Um, another array so let's see I make that one zero make this one and now we've extended out uh, the sideways too so if I rotate around middle mouse you can see our star fields gotten pretty large now um, trying to decide if I need any more yeah so I'm gonna go back to one so I like how wide it is I'm gonna do one last add add modifier add array and this one may be the most important um, it's going to be if I rotate around, I'm actually going to change this from a 1 to a negative 1. And that's just adding, so you can see we're adding stars this direction. Um, you even, again, you could make this 3, and you'll see more stars that way. Um, again, you can totally get away with a smaller star field. My computer is pretty good, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at a 3. But again, if you don't need that big of a star field, then go ahead and just leave it at 2, and that's totally going to work for you. Go ahead and save. Okay, so now we really just need to add our camera and tinker with some of those settings. So I'm going to hold shift, hit A, go down to camera, click on that. I'm going to hit scale and do 10,000 again. Hit enter. That just makes it so we can see our camera in this giant scene. Um, in this right panel, I'm going to go up to item. I'm going to change the rotation to 90, tab, I'm going to hit 0, tab, 0, enter, just to make sure our camera's pointed directly in the direction we want. Um, I like how it's directly in the origin. Um, I'm going to click on the stars real quick and hit 1. And you can see it's kind of in a different position than the world origin. So I'm actually going to go ahead and hit G. Oh, I'm going to make sure. I wasn't actually selected on my, uh, my stars. I'm going to hit Z and go to solid for the moment. And I'm going to hit G, and I'm just going to bring it so the star field is kind of centered in the camera. I'm going to even hit my 3, uh, the view, and I'm going to hit G. I'm just going to bring it over so the camera is kind of right where the edge starts here. Hit 1 and Z and go back to my rendered view. And at, at this point now, let's hit 0 to go into our camera view. And, oh, it's completely black. Well, it's the same issue uh, that we had in the very beginning is that the camera has a limit with how far it sees. So uh, I'm gonna left click on the camera in the top right here, and I'm gonna go to the camera icon. And first I want to click on this viewport display, and I'm gonna click on limits. And so if I hit seven, and I'm gonna shift middle mouse so I have the camera here, you can kind of see this little yellow dot that shows you how far this camera sees. So you can see it barely sees any of this. So um, we need to change this end value up here. So this is the clipping end. So I was happy with 25,000. I'm going to hit enter on that. And you can see it extends out. So this is displaying to you since we turned on the limit. 
This is showing you where this camera ends. So if I hit zero and go back to our view now, we have this nice starry field. And again, yours shouldn't be flickering. Um, I'm just zooming in with my middle mouse and you can see this is a pretty nice scene. Um, so the one thing to know is you can change this end clipping to have more or less stars. Say you don't like how there's so many stars in it, you could take this down to 10,000 and you can see there's way less stars in it. So maybe that makes more sense for your scene and that's the desired look you're going for. Or maybe you want a ton of stars. You could change this to 40,000 and it's just you know incredibly filled with there's little dots of stars everywhere. Um, but I was happy with 25,000. I thought it was a good in-between um, having a really full scene and a not so full scene. So if I go ahead and hit F12, let this render out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This is the end result you get. And so again, if you want more or less stars, you can just change that um, value for the end on the camera. All right, and that is it. Uh, this scene's really great because you can use it for so many different things. Um, I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really does motivate me to keep making more videos. All right, have a good one.